Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, it's actually a bit of a 3-in-1 video. Um, I'll be teaching you guys how to use polyester primer. I'll be doing a review and demo on this Star Spray Gun S106. And I'm also going to be giving you guys a bit of an unboxing on the same gun. So first off, uh, as usual, open it up and we've got the technical information on the spray gun and the user manuals and stuff like that in there. Got a bit of a GPI advertisement as well. Next up we find the brush that can uh, come in handy when you're cleaning the gun out. Um, also the, the gun handle itself comes in on, nice piece of plastic and you can see it's got quite a big uh, hole there for the paint to come out. That's 2.8 mil wide. So. Nice looking gun, pretty standard, you know, uh, didn't pay an overly high price for it, it was about $130, so. Next up we've got our pot, pretty basic, just two parts, put them together and get your settings right and off you go. I've also got a uh, filter in there which I've decided not to use for primers and also we've got the air fitting, it's a Nito air fitting or Nito air fitting. Pretty standard uh, air fitting here in Australia, most panel shops use them, good high flow air fitting. So I grabbed the regulator off one of my other guns. Um, that was mainly just for the sake of showing you guys the, the sort of air pressures I'm using on the gun. It's not really necessary. You could just adjust it from uh, this valve here on the bottom. That's your air adjustment. Um, when running a regulator, make sure you always have that valve there right open or you'll actually get some um, mixed uh, results on the regulator. Um, if that's sort of right down and the regulator's right up, uh, you won't have a true reading on that regulator of your airflow because it's being restricted by that valve not being right open. Next up, uh, we're going to be giving you guys a look at the polyester filler we're using. It's a U-Pol uh, reface filler. Uh, it's basically spray putty. This stuff is basically like spray on bog. Um, you're able to get the same amount of uh, filling capabilities as probably about five to six coats of uh, normal primer, uh, automotive 2K primer, just by putting two coats of this stuff over. So this can here has been sitting around uh, for quite some time and um, it needed a really good stir. So I tipped it into that aluminium pot Gave it a really good stir up, and now I put the aluminium pot onto the scales, zeroed it out, and then weighed in 2% of the hardener. Um, you don't want to overdo it because this stuff really has a tendency to go off quite quick. Um, it was a pretty warm day, it was well above sort of 35 degrees on this day, too. So, um, this was actually the first time I've ever used polyester primer myself. I've spoken to a lot of people over the years. I basically knew exactly how to do it. Um, however, I really wasn't quite prepared for how, just how quick this stuff was going to go off. So, as always, first coat, just giving it a sort of a light coat. It's going to aid with any shrink back and it's going to give you something uh, for your second coat to grip into. It'll, give you a, it'll aid with the adhesion and the uh, shrink back also going to dry nice and quickly so you don't have to wait around for too long. So after that first coat's done, um, I literally left it for about two minutes, probably, yeah, not even two minutes. I just grabbed the camera, as you see here, give you guys a look over it, about the, you know, the kind of thickness. It's, it's really not that heavy, um, but I'll tell you what, that gun is absolutely pumping it on. Like, I wasn't wearing any long pants on this day, and it felt like there was like raindrops hitting my legs from the overspray coming off the side of that bonnet. That's how thick this gun gets it on. 2.8 mil hole. An average primer gun's 1.8 to sort of 2.2. Um, just for your sort of primer fillers, you know, um, just automotive type stuff. You're not going to use this on an everyday job. There's no need to use this like... Sometimes maybe I should have been given this to the apprentices that sort of put one or two coats on and just walked away. Maybe this way they would have actually been getting enough primer on the jobs. But um, as you guys will see here, as I get most of the way over the bonnet, um, I did skip a bit out. I'm going to start slowing down. Uh, the reason being, this stuff just went hard in the... It was just starting to go hard in the gun. I really didn't... wasn't prepared for it. Um, 
as I say, it was my first time using it. Um, learnt, learnt a bit of a lesson, uh, be quick. And uh, maybe, you know, learn from my lesson too. If you guys are doing this at home, um, just, you know, make small batches up. Don't, don't go and decide to use some polyester filler and mix up a full four litre pot of it because basically most of it's going to go to waste, especially if it's a um, high temperature day. Now, they say do not use this stuff any colder than 15 degrees. So that's another thing I read on the back of the can there. Um, so this is a Upal brand that you see, you see me using here. Um, it's pretty good quality products. And I ended up going down after this first coat and we said, oh, we need, we need some more of uh, that polyester filler. And they didn't have any of that, but they gave me some Valspar. Um, it's compatible. It's basically the same stuff, just with a different label on it. It's got a different color. So you can see there, it's, it's real, that was not spraying out of the gun. It's basically starting to go hard. Um, I just decided to tip it out. I could have thinned it down a touch more if I really wanted to, but I wasn't too fussed because I got the worst of it. That that patch over the other side of the bonnet that was black, that was not that much wrong with it. Um, I'll give you guys a bit of a uh, info on this uh, car itself and why we're doing what we're doing. This is a restoration project. Um, it's a HQ GTS Monaro. Pretty nice old car. Um, they're pretty sought after car here in Australia. Um, and this bonnet, probably worth over $1,000 if you can find them. It's a genuine one. There was a lot of damage on it. And we said to the owner, we said, mate, what do you want to do? You know, like there's a couple of days worth of work in that bonnet. We need to skim fill the entire thing. It was in a pretty bad way. And um, he said, mate, I don't even think I'll be able to get one for sort of you know, the price that you'll be able to fix it for. So I said, alright, leave it with us, mate. We'll just, um, we'll just skim fill the entire, uh, hood there and polyester it, block it back, reprime it. So don't forget that when you are using these polyester fillers, they are so thick, they're prone to getting pinholes in them. Um, you really need to do a no normal automotive 2K primer over the top of this. You can't just block this back and then paint over it you'll you will get pinholes in it so it's just basically as I said before it's basically just um, spray on bog you know this one it's still left a bit to be desired after best part of a day on the speed file on the long block with 40 grit sandpaper on it um, so yeah we just smash some uh, polyester filler over it. The hood's actually still not finished. I'm just editing this footage up as I go on this car. Um, so unfortunately, I can't give you guys an ending on this car yet. Usually, I like to do a job and then include the, the finished product in the end of each video. But for this video, I'll just have to leave it as is. Um, all right, back to the gun itself. Great gun, you know, for the price. Totally, absolute winner. I think some of these star guns are actually starting to get a little bit better. I've got a little star um, mini gun there. Can't remember the exact model off the top of my head now, but I'm really happy with the results I've been getting out of it. Um, it seems like a nice quality, and it's get gets the paint on real nice. So, um, you know, I'd go for it. If you guys need a polyester gun, don't go past the S106 star spray gun with a 2.8mm on it. Um, as you saw there, I gave you guys a look on the regulator. It was sort of about 15 psi. Is it sweet spot? Um, but you'll uh, you'll know when you're watching it go on. You'll know when it's right. Um, if it's going on, um, you know, too slow, uh, which it's it's going to go on slow naturally because of what you're doing. Um, you're just loading this shit on basically. Um, now, on the can of the. But, uh, the polyester, it said do not thin down, but you know what I said to hell with the rules, who goes by the rules I've been breaking them since I was a kid so I just wanted to uh, thin it down a bit for my last coat, you can see there it really started slowing down again it was like it was starting to go hard in my gun again, so I just um, just got the thinners bottle, or the you know the reducer bottle, smashed them in the top of the pot, I didn't even measure it out, I just smashed a bit, squirted it straight into the pot, shook the pot up um, and off I go. I wanted to get a, another full coat over this bonnet before I um, walked away. So um, 
as I say, if I was to leave this for 20 minutes and let that flush off, the, the, the pain in the gun would just be hard, so I'd just, you know what, throw caution to the wind. If it gets pinholes, it gets pinholes. I'm not really fussed. I want the material on that panel. We're gonna hit this with 80 grip tomorrow, actually. Um, we let that set overnight. It was pretty hard. It was still a little bit tacky, or a little bit gummy. You can push, sort of push your fingernails into it if you really tried. So what I just said to my mate, I said, mate, let's just whack it out in the sun. It's been sitting in the sun all day. Stinking hot West Aussie sun, probably sitting at 50 plus degrees. That should give all that shrink back. All those solvents should evaporate out of that bonnet. Chemical reaction in the hardeners is going to do its job. And hopefully we'll have something that won't shrink back on this guy in the future. Um, yeah, we've been getting a few of these restoration jobs. I've been really enjoying it. It's something that you can really sink your teeth into, uh, spend a bit of time on, and um, take pride in this kind of job. So you can see that there's a really a lot of material on there. Um, it's definitely served its purpose. It definitely still needs a bit of work, that hood there. Um, still needs a lot of blocking. We'll probably spend another half a day plus on that. By the time I got the inside painted, probably another day's work just in that bonnet there. But um, there you go, that's the review and demo on that gun. Gets a big thumbs up for me. Value for money, absolutely. And hope you guys have learnt a couple of things. Um, thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.